Hey everyone, welcome back. Another week, still shirtless, still scruffy, but I'm gonna switch it up for you guys this week. I'm gonna do a book review of the 5 a.m. club and I wanna tell you how you can take some of the principles from this book and apply it to your life as a cabin crew, wherever you are. Now, I'm not gonna summarize the entire book. This isn't gonna be like a cliff notes, but I have picked out some important things that I think can benefit your life and that I want to show you that cabin crew can learn to do, even if you're not working in a typical nine to five lifestyle. A colleague of mine actually gave me this book to borrow and I read it so fast. And what I really like is that it is a self-help book, but in order to digest the information easier, it's written as a fictional story. Now, I don't know if you guys recall, but in one of my first videos, I talked about some of my goals that I wanted to accomplish during this time. And one of those was getting on a regular sleeping pattern. When I borrowed this book, I was slowly easing into that and I was actually doing quite well. I was going to bed between 10 and midnight and getting up between 7 and 8. But I promise you, after I read this book, I woke up at 5 a.m. without even setting an alarm. I don't know if it was just in my subconscious mind, but the third day into the book, I somehow woke up, I checked my phone, and it was 5.03 a.m. And this was like while I was on the second or third chapter of the book. And I was like so stunned. I was like, okay, is this a sign? So it really motivated me to kind of start to apply the principles from the book into my everyday life. All right, so the biggest takeaway from the book is essentially having the importance of a morning routine. It means having the time to yourself in the morning before you check your phone, before you interact with others, before you have any sort of stimulus entering your mind to really take that time for yourself. This can be anything. This can be doing an early morning workout. This can be meditating. This can be reading. Um, or it could just be enjoying the newspaper with a cup of coffee. For everyone, it's different. But the important thing is that you have this time to yourself before you either go to work or kind of start the other tasks you have to do for the day. And it's about letting yourself enjoy this time. And that kind of elevates your morning and sets you up for success. Now, the reason the book is called The 5 a.m. Club is because I do believe this is written for people with a nine to five lifestyle. Office workers, people going in with like a career sort of job, corporate America, that sort of thing where you typically start at nine o'clock in the morning. So most people will wake up around seven to get ready and get to work on time. The reason it's called The 5 a.m. Club is because now you're pushing yourself to wake up an hour earlier in order to have that hour to yourself before you start to get ready have breakfast and do your commute to the office. Now, as I said, I think you can kind of do anything in this hour, but the book specifically outlines a specific morning ritual that you should start implementing as a habit. And it's called the 20-20-20 method. The reason it's called this is because he breaks down that hour into those three increments of 20, movement, reflection, and growing. So this basically means what he suggests is first thing when you wake up, you spend 20 minutes of movement, the book actually says to do like strenuous exercise that makes you sweat. I don't like to do that in the morning. So I do like a mobility flexibility thing and some breath work. The next 20 minutes is for reflection. So for instance, meditating or keeping a journal. And the final 20 minutes is for growing, like stimulating your intellect, reading something, listening to a podcast, a, a motivational speech, something like that. So essentially that makes up your hour every morning and then you start your day. Own your morning, elevate your life. So now I've gone through the book and I've picked out my favorite parts and I wanna show you how you can implement them as cabin crew because we don't have schedules like the rest of the world. So the first thing is how can I start a 20-20-20 habit as cabin crew when my shift work starts at completely different times? You can be getting up at four o'clock in the morning or having to get up at nine o'clock at night for a, an evening flight. The point is, it doesn't matter what time you wake up, but try to wake up an hour earlier so you can give yourself the time to do this, regardless of what time your shift is starting. I do not recommend skipping out on sleep to make this happen. So for instance, a lot of our flights to Europe depart really early in the morning, between like 7 and 9 a.m., which means we have to get to work between 5 and 7 a.m. to sign in. Most crew will wake up around 4 o'clock for these sort of check-ins, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend waking up at three o'clock if that means you're going to be tired and you're going to sacrifice sleep. The book doesn't suggest sacrificing sleep to make this happen. It actually suggests going to bed earlier in order to give yourself time to wake up earlier. 
So for early morning check-ins like this, it's quite difficult to do. So I would recommend to modify this one hour routine that you normally do, such as on your days off or when you have a later departure time to kind of like a quickie routine. So what I do when I have these early morning check-ins is I streamline the 60 minute process into like a 25 to 30 minute process which might even be too much for some people, but for me it works because I'm very slow moving in the morning. I don't like to like jump out of bed and rush to get ready. I do like to have my time. It really makes me feel better. Plus I am a stomach sleeper. So I often wake up with like marks all over my face from pillows or like I hold the pillow over my face when I sleep. So if I'm gonna wake up and jump and get ready to work, Oftentimes I will still be like puffy faced or I'll have all these marks. So I really do need that extra time in the morning to uh, like wash those out and let your skin kind of settle. So I'm not checking into work with like a pillow mark on my face like I literally just woke up. So for me, about 30 minutes extra in the morning is perfect to do this. So what I'll do before I even make my coffee or make my drink or anything, I'll jump right on my yoga mat. I'll just do some basic movements, flexibility. Um, I kind of have broken it down into like three main moves to kind of stretch myself out that I can do very quickly. I like to do like sort of squats and mobility work in my squats and yoga positions just to get the blood flowing. I don't skip on the meditating because that's important to me. It's something I'm really trying to work on within myself. It's so funny because 10 years ago, I would never have been able to even get through a yoga class or five minutes of meditation. And now I'm really trying to do it because it does make you feel better. So I suggest everyone tries to work on their weaknesses because it definitely improves your mental discipline. Plus when you wake up in the morning, you have so many thoughts running through your mind. It's really good to kind of tamper them and quiet them and find that stillness in the morning so you can learn to be less reactive throughout the day. And then I'll spend the last 10 minutes with my coffee reading like a magazine or the news something like that and then I'll get ready and take the bus to work now if it's not a crazy early check-in but it's still somewhat early in the morning like maybe 9 a.m. or even up until the afternoon 12 I will make myself get up early even if I landed late the night before something like that um, and do the full hour of work I really like this because if I can get in 20 to 30 minutes of an actual workout before doing a flight all day and landing in a foreign country where I don't know what the gym is like, it makes me feel better. I like to do like a hit routine in the morning or some fast paced cardio. You can even run out your door and run up the stairs in your building, you know, if you want to do that. But I promise you going to work after you've like sweated it out a little bit puts you in such a better mood for the day. You're more energized, you have more brain clarity and I just feel better when I reach the destination. That cardio in the morning is really important to me. So if I have an afternoon check-in, I'll definitely do like a full hour, even if that means waking up at seven or 8 a.m. instead of letting myself sleep in till nine or 10. I definitely recommend reading the book. As you can see, I've highlighted certain pages. It kind of explains into more detail the reason he suggests doing these things. Like this page talks about the morning genius and why he suggests doing certain things in the morning and how it affects your brain waves. So he's got a lot of diagrams and stuff in this book that's really interesting to read if you wanna get the detail of it. This is his 2020 formula, like completely deconstructed. So as I said, it goes into a lot of detail, but these are just the like big important things that I think would make a drastic improvement in your life. All right, so we talked about the morning and now we got to talk about an evening routine. This I think is even more important than the morning routine, at least for myself. If any of you are anxious sleepers or struggle with sleep problems, this is going to be super important for you as well. So he talks about a pre-sleep routine. Now this is outlined as a three hour routine starting at 7 p.m. going till 10 p.m. when the normal person that works a nine to five would fall asleep. Basically in a perfect world of a nine to five, at seven o'clock, you would have your last meal, and this is when he says you shut all technology off. I know this is really hard for you cabin crew, but we gotta get over our addictions to our phones. Essentially, after dinner is when you need to stop all of the overstimulation, which often comes from social media and technology. So then he says from eight to nine, you're gonna have kind of a free hour of relaxing, you can meditate, you can do some yoga, maybe you wanna take an Epsom salt bath, light some candles, but if you do the same thing every night, this is gonna be a cue for your brain to realize, okay, it's time to start winding down, I'm gonna start preparing for sleep. In the final hour from nine to 10, he says you prepare to sleep in your cold, dark bedroom. <laughs> 
if you do a lot of sleep research, you're going to realize this is something that's people are talking about now about having the bedroom be completely technology free, even no TV, which is very hard for cabin crew. We often have a TV in our room. And of course, when we're in hotels, there's always a TV. He suggests doing an evening gratitude practice. And that basically rounds out your pre-sleep ritual. This is a really hard concept to swallow, basically saying for three hours before you sleep, you're not going to touch your phone. So I would suggest starting in baby steps. Don't like try to cold turkey it because then you're just going to end up not sticking to the habit. So if you can at least try to do an hour before sleep where you literally turn off the Wi-Fi, put it on silent mode and don't check any sort of notifications, I think that's a good stepping stone. For me, trying to do this in Dubai is really important, especially with how packed our rosters are or how packed they were before the coronavirus because I would find myself really overstimulated at night, especially before flights because I was trying to do so much in one day. Once they increased our flying hours to about 100 hours per month, our rosters became so tight that we just had minimum rest between some flights, so essentially back-to-back -back flying, or we would have one day off between. The only time we ever had two days off between was if you were preparing for a long flight, like from Dubai to the US. If you only have one full day off in Dubai, you're gonna try to get a lot done. For me, usually that meant sleeping in a little bit. So let's say by the time you sleep in, wake up, eat, go to the gym, it's already the afternoon. Then you're gonna do your laundry, then you're gonna meet some friend for some social plans or dinner or something. So by that time, it's gonna be six, seven, eight o'clock. You're gonna come back, you're gonna unpack your bag from the last trip, you're gonna fold your laundry, then you're gonna repack for the trip tomorrow. By this time, it's probably nine, 10 or even 11. And you kind of feel like you never even had time for yourself. Like, oh, I wanted to watch a movie or I wanted to read a book or something. Like I was busy all day with other people not doing anything for myself. So I found that when it was bedtime, because by the time you finished everything, it was so late or it was time to sleep because, you know, maybe it's only 10 o'clock, but the next day you have to get up at four or 5 a.m. I was really overstimulated and having a lot of problems falling asleep. So learning to take my phone off, learning to plan my day around the pre-sleep routine it really helps me. Now, some people might not have problems with sleep. Sleep is something I've always struggled with since I was a child. And I'm gonna do another vlog in the future about sleep and different techniques and devices that I purchased. So we'll cover all of that in detail in another vlog. But I know some cabin crew are the type that can just like fall asleep whenever they want. And that's essentially the best quality to have if you're gonna be a flight attendant. But for me, trying to fall asleep is very, very difficult. So implementing this pre-sleep ritual really did help me. And I even do it on my hotel layovers. For instance, if it was an afternoon flight, so we land in the evening and we're at a new destination or somewhere we, where we wanna do a tour or something early, I most likely won't join the crew for dinner and drinks, which is very common when people land, you know, between six and 8 p.m. to say, guys, go up, change, let's have dinner, let's have drinks. I'll probably skip out on that I don't like to be antisocial, but if I do that, then it means I'm there for another two to three hours. That can mean you're gonna fall asleep really late and you're gonna be tired the next day. So because I generally eat on the flight and I also do intermittent fasting, it's too late to have a dinner by the time we land. So I just go to the hotel room, check in, and I kind of just relax and do my essentially three hour sleep routine in the hotel room so I can get up early the next day and have breakfast and join the crew for something. So as cabin crew, it's basically about taking these principles and finding a way to fit them in. You necessarily don't have to do the full hour morning routine. You don't have to spend three hours in the evening winding down. If you can just spend at least one hour winding down in the evening and 30 minutes before you're up and doing something, that's going to help you out a lot. Again, he talks about in the book, the importance of sleep, all of the processes your body goes through during sleep. And he's not suggesting to get up at 5 a.m. if you're not getting any sleep at all. You're supposed to coach yourself into going to bed early and waking up early. When we don't sleep enough, not only is it fiercely difficult to get up early, but a number of other highly damaging things impair your productivity and minimize your performance, along with reducing your happiness and eroding your health. So as cabin crew, what does this mean? It might mean you gotta skip out on the partying. Depending on your age, you might be at a point in your life when you're kind of over partying or drinking all the time with crew, but maybe you feel like you do it because you're an extrovert and you wanna be around people, but it's about taking ownership for your own health and saying, you know, I really don't need to go down and 
have five beers in the middle of the weeknight just because I'm working a flight. It's okay to say no, and I think a lot of cabin crew have a problem saying no. Or you can join them and you simply just have the discipline not to drink. And the other way when you're traveling as cabin crew to make sure that you aren't skipping out on sleep, even if you are waking up early to do this sort of routine, is to skip the breakfast buffet. I know this totally, totally pains me. I'm American. I love breakfast. I love buffets. So skipping out on a breakfast buffet is like the worst suggestion ever. But I did find during all my layovers that if I had a late landing or a late night and I was trying to get up early simply just to save money and spend $5 on a breakfast buffet, it's not really worth it. I would much rather get up, have a leisurely morning, do my hour routine, and then order room service or go down and have lunch somewhere versus getting up early simply just to not miss the buffet. Food is very important, but as cabin crew, sleep is definitely more important. So you're gonna have to read this book to get into the details of this, but one thing he says is to use joy as kind of a GPS to guide your life. And he has 10 principles or billionaire maxims that he suggests following in order to increase your happiness. I'm not gonna talk about all of them, but I wanna single out one because it applies to cabin crew specifically. It's number five, which is avoid bad people. It talks about basically avoiding bad people and their negative energy and letting it impact you. And it talks about emotional contagion and looking and identifying who you associate with because that ends up interfering or influencing your spirit or your persona. What I found interesting is what he talked about in terms of the associations or the people that you surround yourself with. He says, the real key is to avoid trouble creators. People who have grown up in an environment riddled with drama and nonstop problems will consciously and subconsciously recreate drama and nonstop problems because as amazing as it seems, such conditions feel similar, safe, and like a home to them. Stay away from all drama queens and negativity kings. So, as cabin crew, this is two people, our fellow colleagues and the passengers. We've all flown with the cabin crew who love to create drama, love to gossip, that sort of thing. If you notice that, just stay away. You don't have to be friends with them. And usually these sorts of people are super charming and personable and fun. So it kind of draws you in. But then when you realize what's going on underneath, you got to say, do I really want to be around that all the time? Do I want that toxic energy in my life? Is it elevating me or is it just bringing me down? Now, I never really had a problem with the sort of people I hung around with, but I did have a problem with letting passengers affect me personally in a negative way. I'm a sensitive guy, and this is the sort of job where you need to be able to understand that you're wearing the uniform. So when someone's mad at you, they're not mad at you as a person. They're mad at your company, and you're just a representation of that company. The happiest cabin crew are the ones that can do the job and walk off the plane without thinking of anything. I have a habit of wanting to teach people lessons when they're rude and I bring all that drama home with me. So if I got in a fight with a passenger, I, also, I often will get off the plane and think about it for the whole rest of the night. So I've really had to train myself not to do this. It's not really easy to completely change your emotions or something. The type of person you are is kind of within yourself. You can't say, oh, I wish I didn't feel that way. But what you can change is your reaction to things. So even though I am sensitive and I don't like arguing with passengers and it really bothers me when people just seem to throw all of their decency, respect, and common courtesy out the window when they're on an aircraft, I've tried to learn to react differently. I have to take a moment and say, okay, this is an issue within themselves. This doesn't have to do with me. This is a culmination of different things that have happened to them. And I'm simply just going to keep my mouth shut and try not to engage with them in a way that's going to escalate it more. If you have an ego like mine, where you wanna like teach people like, maybe you should be a little more respectful you just have to come to a realization that it's not our job to teach the rest of the world this. And once that happens, you're gonna have such a relief in your life, feeling like you don't need to carry around this weight on your shoulders of teaching everyone how to be a decent human being. Unfortunately, that's just something people are gonna have to learn on their own. All right, so how long do you think it's gonna take to instill some of these habits? There's lots of books about habits and they all say different time frames. Robin Sharma says it's going to take 66 days, and that's broken down into three categories of 22 days. 
The first 22 are deconstructing your normal life and starting to implement these new things. The middle 22 is when you're really starting to install these new habits. He says this is the most stressful and frustrating time and you're gonna feel like you wanna give up, but you shouldn't just stick with it. And then the final 22 days, you've essentially encoded this into a routine for yourself. You've survived the chaos and you've survived kind of the chaotic feelings and the disruption of your old life, and now it's basically installed in yourself. So again, for cabin crew, what does this mean? Well, we all right now have a lot of time off from flying. Some of us have already not flown for a month, a month and a half. It might even be another month or another two months. So this is the perfect time for you to really decide, do you wanna elevate your morning? Do you wanna elevate your life and do it? So this is the perfect time to try all this and start to implement it and really be able to stick to a routine because we're not working as shift workers right now. So it's the best time to kind of deconstruct your day and try to install this as a habit on your days off. So when you go back to flying, you can at least keep your days off in Dubai the same way that you're doing right now with these new habits. So I'm gonna leave you with a final quote. I really like this quote because I think a lot of us have a problem with social media and being addicted to our phones. He says, an addiction to distraction is the death of your creative production. I think that is so true, especially right now. I think people during this stay at home period are falling into two categories, the doers and the watchers. Some people are mindlessly spending time on social media, scrolling, watching other people, doing challenges. Look, if that makes you happy, go for it. But I think all of us have certain projects or things in our lives that we wanted to accomplish that we probably never had the time to do because we were working. Now is the time that you can evaluate your life and say, what do I want to change? What do I want to work towards? If you're using Facebook and Instagram as a way to escape boredom, it's time to reevaluate your relationship with those apps. Sure, spend time on social media, but set a certain amount of time that you wanna spend. Don't just spend all day because your brain is actually trained to do the easiest thing. So if you have a choice between learning something new or scrolling a social media feed, your brain's gonna choose social media because it's less work for your brain. So if you have something you wanna accomplish, if you wanna work on a book or do something creative, whatever it is, you need to devote the time to that. Don't just start scrolling because a couple minutes of scrolling leads to more scrolling, other things, clicking links, surfing the web, and by the time you know it, it's like two or three hours. I'm definitely not saying forget social media. I'm just saying use the timers. We have screen time timers now. There's even apps that you can like lock yourself out of certain other apps. I do my social media at the end of the day when I wanna relax, when I wanna unwind. I set like an hour timer when I've kind of accomplished everything that I wanna do during the day. Because you also gotta remember, you're gonna become less productive throughout the day, the longer that you have been awake and your brain has been focusing on things. So you wanna kind of do the most important things earlier in the day and then the easier things later on. So those are my final thoughts. Again, use this time wisely, guys. I hope you enjoyed the tips that I pulled out from this book. If you liked this content, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends if you thought it was helpful, and leave a comment for me if you enjoyed it or if there's something else similar that you'd like to see. That's all I got for you guys this week. Take care, stay healthy, and we'll chat soon.